Good morning, friends. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I want to welcome you all to an informal walk around my gardens here in mid-April. It looks like we're going to be having some big storms this evening here in Pennsylvania. And I have so many beautiful spring bulbs that I just must show you before this thunderstorm and possible hailstorm comes through. So let's take a look at all the gardens that have bulbs in them today. And then on the full April garden tour, I'll show you all the gardens. But I just can't wait for you to see how the driveway garden is shaping up with a naturalized bulb meadow over there. And also the main flower walk is just full of tulips and all kinds of bright, saturated shades of purple, orange, pink, and even peach. But let's start here in the hydrangea room. You might be able to see it's already getting pretty windy. The first bulb that we can take a closer look at are these beautiful summer snowflakes in the bottom left of your screen. They're such dainty little white flowers. And I feel like the flower heads themselves look like they would be the perfect hat for a little fairy. The color palette that I'm going for over here in the hydrangea room is green, purple, white, pink, and peach. And that peach is always coming from some kind of a bulb, rhizome, or what have you. So for spring, we did have the Del Nishaw and Replete Daffodils in here. Now we have La Bella Pock. But before we take a closer look at that, let me just sneak down here for a second to show you I have the presence of green here blooming via these beautiful hellebores. Just a modest planting of hellebores in this garden. And some pink astilbe. And those strappy leaves you see that look like amaryllis are Mount Everest alliums. These reblooming lilacs are doing so well this year. They hadn't done that well in the past, so I'm not sure what's different, if they're just more mature now, happy or happier here, rooted in better. But it seems like the reblooming lilacs have more tubular flowers than the old fashioned lilacs. So let's take a look at these gorgeous labella pock tulips. So many amazing colors in one tulip. Is it butterscotch, peach, soft brown, gentle rose? Let me know how you would describe it. But I just love it. The only thing is I wish I had planted a lot more of them in this area. And now that I see everything in bloom, I think next year I'll do La Bella Pock again over here, but I'll also add in a tulip I grew last year called Blue Spectacle, which is more of a dusty purple. And I think that will look really nice together. Let me just step back here a second. Try not to step on any anemones. So for the first time ever, I decided to buy some anemone corms on Amazon, thinking they were going to be a double blue. They were a really great price. Oops, I just hit the chair. They were a really great price, so I ordered 50 of them. Well, they just started blooming and they're all bright red. So does anyone want 50 bright red anemones? <laughs> they're over here in the hydrangea room, ready to be dug up. Creeping Phlox is in bloom now. We did have shades of blue hyacinths blooming just a few weeks ago. So let's travel through Hummingbird Way and see the tulips that are near the new bench area. Sensational Honeysuckle is on the left side of the arbor. And I would like to get some more of those for the right side of the arbor. Also, I think we put in about 36 foxglove into this area. And you might be able to see we have some fall sown fever few, a bicolor sweet william, 
And I think that's pretty, oh, we have some peonies and some iris. So lots more to look forward to, but of course, the hydrangea room is all about the hydrangeas. So here's a new little seating area. This bench used to be over in the driveway garden, but I thought it was such a beautiful bench and it wasn't getting any use over there. So I made this little landing pad for it. I think I need one more stone. And I put a stone that was located at the front of my grandma's house right there in the center. This is her angel right next to it and her lamb's ear. And here's Rocky the rock star himself looking for tuna, I bet. These tulips are so beautiful and I'm excited to be using these colors in the main flower walk all growing season. The purple lily flowering tulip you see is called Purple Dream and the peach one is apricot box and these have aged in such an interesting manner purple dream started out as more of a light dusty purple and it was so different than the picture i almost thought i got the wrong variety then about a week later it aged to this beautiful deep jewel tone saturated purple and apricot box started out almost bright orange and then aged to what it looked like in the picture. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So here's a look from this direction down to the main flower walk where we have quite a few tulips in bloom. We'll see that in one second. But before we do that, let's head over to the driveway garden because I'm just so excited to show you how this natural planting of bulbs is looking. So here it is, friends, and I think we finally might have the park look and the really, really natural planting that I have always desired and dreamed of over here in the driveway garden. So the planting method that I use for this area is Jacqueline van der Kloet's method of mixing up lots and lots of different bulbs and also doing this over the course of all the growing season, which I also did in this area scattering them all throughout the garden and planting them exactly where they land and the hope is to really get this very natural almost meadow-like look to an area not contrived or in blocks and i absolutely love it and i think it's only going to get better over time so i have alliums in all different heights in this area also daffodils like I say, the daffodils are starting to go over, but some of them still look really good. Here's one that looks nice. This one is called Avalanche, and it was definitely a favorite as soon as it started to bloom. But then I picked some, and immediately I was hit with this wonderful fragrance reminiscent of Lily of the Valley. It is on the short side, so that's something to take into consideration, but it is definitely a beautiful one. I think a must grow. So. Hopefully you can imagine this and bloom with all these alliums and varying heights. Oh, did you guys see that blue jay? And then I have purple foliage sprinkled throughout, tons of lilies, so sorry about the noise, tons of Orlea, Feverfew, but my hope for this area too is that I don't have to mulch it anymore, that it'll just be really full of reseeders. Check out this really beautiful daffodil. This one's called Lemon Beauty. It was the last daffodil to open in the garden and I just love it. It almost reminds me of a lemon bar or it makes me hungry for a lemon bar at least. So the back of this area has a lot of shrubs. So the back will fill in with the shrub border and then let me show you it from the other angle. This part has just the slightest bit of formality with a hedge of Invincible Spirit 2 hydrangea behind the bird bath. And then there is a circling hedge of dwarf butterfly bush in front of it. And then here's a look from behind where you can see all of these beautiful daffodils growing in the grass. And then that looks onto what I call the main flower walk. Before we head over there, I'll show you some beautiful daffodils over here in this garden. This beautiful double yellow is called Shearborn. 
This is a really beautiful one, really strong, long stems and very long lasting. And we also have Del Nisha in this area. Beautiful ivory and peach double. And we also had Cum Laude and British Gamble daffodils in this garden, but those have pretty much gone over at this point. So let's go ahead and head into the main flower walk now. There has been a lot of moving of older shrubs in this area and perennials in order to go ahead and establish that new color palette of deep saturated purple, light muted purple, orange, and we might add in some magenta and definitely acid green. But if you look over at the purple dream and apricot fox tulips there, right next to the spirea, that'll kind of give you a sense of what color palette I'm going for in this area. And I want to be very consistent and purposeful with that this year. So I hope you don't mind. I just seeded grass in this area. It's probably only been about a week, maybe two weeks. So I hope you won't mind. That looks a little bit silly, but let me back up because even right here at the entrance, some things have changed. So we had the older nine bark on the left side of the fence. And I moved this one to the right side of the fence to go ahead and match it. I cut the sage back really, really hard this year. And I'm going to start doing a little bit of brick edging. I think I was only paying about a dollar for these bricks over at Lowe's. I haven't finished the one on the left side just because I have that new grass growing there and I don't want to step on it yet but I'll be circling a little bit of a brick path there as well. Service berry here, but let's go ahead in together. So here's the view from our kitchen window. I'm currently standing in that dry creek that I made that's coming off the gutter, which was really great. I put the dry creek here. My husband fixed the gutter drainage problem we were having over there. And so hopefully we'll have this nice grass path that we won't lose repetitively over the growing season. That's been happening to us ever since we moved here. The peonies that we have back here, I think they're three years old now, so we'll get a really nice show off of those this year. Lots of alliums back here. A big hydrangea next to me. So I repeated that planting of Purple Dream and Apricot Fox. And what do you guys think about these colors together? I really love it. I'm really having a thing for orange this year. I don't think I've ever even really tried to incorporate a lot of orange into my garden, but whenever I see purple and orange together, I think, man, it's just beautiful. It's going to be raining soon, so I don't have the train out currently, but you can leave the track out. This track is designed for outdoor use. So I haven't got around to mulching the left side of the border because of the grass, but you can see some alliums coming up there, some bupleurum, and we'll get closer in one second. Let's go ahead and just stick with the right side of the border, and then we'll go ahead and circle back. Let me step out of this. So this sweet buttery yellow daffodil in the front mixed in and around these junipers is yellow cheerfulness. I really like this, but I don't think it's the right position for this daffodil. I think I need to move it somewhere else, but I'm not sure where quite yet. Now let's get a long close up on one of my new favorite tulips. This one over here called Blushing Lady. This tulip is called Blushing Lady and isn't it absolutely gorgeous? It looks good enough to eat. It almost looks like a perfectly iced tulip amazing pinks, corals, and I love the way that it closes up like this and it looks completely different in the sun. I also love the structure of this tulip. It's really, really nice, incredibly tall. This, this might be one of the tallest tulips I've ever grown, but this is definitely a must grow. Here's a close up. I just love how the petals close up like that beautiful. So here's another tulip. It's really fun and kind of changes colors. It's called Infinity. 
and we do have some columbine mixed throughout. You can see I have some tulips that have magically appeared from other years that so don't really match the color palette, but that's okay. So this tulip is called Infinity, and the ones here are in full sun, so they're starting to go over. I'll show you some that are in more of a shady position because they start out looking quite different. Back behind that, we have another planting of Clarkia, another hydrangea. Oh, I forgot to show you I had moved another one of these incredible hydrangeas back near the dry creek. So just hoping to get that repetition again. Snowball, snowball by Burnham back here and that Vitex we moved. You can see it really leaves out so late, just kind of like the butterfly bush. They're very late to leaf out. And so I'm really glad I decided to put it in the back of the border. Let's go right next to this snowball viburnum and look at one. I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. I'm going to go with cream upstar. It's spelled C-R-E-M-E. -E. Beautiful, very butter yellow, very soft yellow. Pink margins, a little bit of green there. I thought this one was going to be a little bit more peach, but as I mentioned previously, maybe they will turn peach. And then you can see some more infinity tulips over there. Let's go back to the front of the border. So a lot of these later tulips have only just started to open, but over here we have Amazing Grace, and it's a beautiful pink tulip. And then we also have some parrot tulips. I think we have Amazing Parrot there. We still have Elegant Lady yet to bloom. And you see I have lots and lots of open space in the garden this year so that we can go ahead and stick those vibrant colors everywhere. If we take a look at this side of the border, we'll be able to see some of the infinity tulips as they just start to emerge. Who is that, Rocky in there? Always getting around to something, this guy. So yes, yeah, sorry about the lack of mulch everywhere. I recently moved a, what was it? A holly, I think. Oh, a winterberry holly from this front position to a back position. But here's a look at what these infinity tulips look like earlier on. And they really do start out even lighter than this. So you get that really nice color change. I also went ahead and put in the false hydrangea vine on all these trellises. I'm gonna have to keep a really, really close eye. You know what, I even need to go back right after this video just to watch out for bindweed because I am having a bindweed issue in this area. Some Flaming Prince tulips back there from previous years, some purple ones from previous years as well. So that's a look at what the main flower walk looks like here in mid to late April. Hopefully the storm won't be too bad and we'll be able to see all the tulips in bloom. Can you believe this? What a wonderful morning. Look at all these petals falling all around us. But hopefully the show will get even better in about one week's time. And maybe by then I'll have some mulch on the ground. Well friends, thanks so much for joining me for this unexpected and informal garden walk. The next video that I'm going to be filming for you is a spring tour over at Chanticleer Garden. Now I think YouTube will still notify you of new videos if you hit the bell icon, but the more videos that you like that I produce and the more times you leave a comment, I think, and I'm not really sure, I'm not really sure about any of this YouTube stuff, but I think they'll show you more of my videos the more that um, you engage with the video, like hit the like button. And I just wouldn't want to miss, and I wouldn't want anyone to miss that tour of Chanticleer because I think it's really the most beautiful garden that I've ever seen in my whole life. But for now, fingers crossed the storm isn't too bad. Rocky and I want to wish you a wonderful day out in your gardens. And until next time, happy gardening. Bye.